Let's move to the next typo. Number 18. Buyer agrees in writing to sell her Picasso painting to seller for $100,000. The contract calls for the painting to be delivered without a frame. One week later, before delivery, the two parties sign a modification whereby seller agrees to include with the delivery at no extra charge worth $1,000. Seller then delivers the painting on the appointed day, but without the frame. Has seller breached by failing to deliver the frame? The answer is yes, seller has breached because the modification was binding. The key to this problem is that unlike the prior two hypos, the contract here is a contract for the sale of goods under Article 2. The relevant doctrine is not the common law pre-existing duty rule, a special rule imposed by Article 2. UCC Section 2-2091 contains a very important modification to common law consideration principles. That section says that an agreement modifying a contract within this article, for example, a contract for the sale of goods, needs no consideration to be binding, unquote. Therefore, in a sale of goods scenario in which the parties agree to modify the contract, you never have to worry about the requirement of consideration or the common law pre-existing duty rule. Section 2-2091 says that modifications don't need consideration to be binding. So here, even though buyer has not given any consideration for seller's agreement to throw in the frame, seller's agreement to include the frame is binding on him. Modifications of a contract to sell goods do not need consideration to be binding. Now, I should mention before we leave this hypo that if buyer had behaved in a bad faith or a coercive way to extract the modification, if the buyer had, for instance, said, quote, I'll reject the painting unless you throw in a frame, unquote, then seller's promise to throw in the frame would likely not be enforceable, but this result would not come from the requirement of consideration or from the pre-existing duty rule. It would come from the UCC's general requirement that both parties behave in good faith. Let's move on now to Hypo 19. Debt owes cred $2,000 payable on February 1. Because debt is nearly insolvent, cred orally agrees on January 15 that if debt pays $1,000 by February 1, cred will forgive the rest of the debt. Debt tenders the $1,000 on February 1, but cred rejects it and sues debt for the full $2,000. Assuming that debt did not make any detrimental reliance on CRED's promise to take $1,000, is CRED entitled to a judgment for the full $2,000? The answer is yes. CRED is entitled to the originally promised $2,000 and is not bound by his own promise to take $1,000. As I hope you can see, a creditor's promise to give the debtor more time to pay or to take less than he is owed on a liquidated debt, violates the common law pre-existing duty rule. That's because in this situation, the debtor is merely promising to do what he's already contractually required to do, or in fact, promising to do even less than he's already required to do. So the debtor is not giving consideration for the creditor's promise to take less. But you have to be very careful about these debtor-creditor modification agreements on the multistate. Remember what we learned in the standard non-creditor, non-sale of goods scenario. Even the slightest additional promise by the person who mainly benefits from the modification will be enough to take the case out of the pre-existing duty rule. That same rule applies in the debtor-creditor modification scenario as well. If the debtor promises to do anything slightly different or better than she was previously obligated to do, she promises to pay the lesser amount one day earlier than previously scheduled, then the case is taken out of the pre-existing duty rule and the creditor's promise to take less will be enforceable. The same thing is true of so-called debtor-creditor extension agreements, 
If the only thing that happens is that the creditor gives the debtor more time to pay without the debtor promising to pay interest for the extension, then the pre-existing duty rule applies, and the creditor's promise of more time to pay is not binding. But if the debtor promises to pay interest for the extension period, even a small amount of interest, that's enough to take the fact pattern out of the pre-existing duty rule, and the creditor's promise of extra time will be binding because the interest payable during the extension period constitutes consideration.